Hello everybody, my name is Gerben Kamp. I'm an instructor at Juniper Networks Educational Services. In this learning bite, I will explain how to configure support for an access point that resides in a different site or country than the controller does. Support for wide area network outage will be covered in a different learning bite. Here we are in Ringmaster. Ringmaster is the management, configuration, and monitoring tool for the Juniper Wireless LAN solution. As you can see, I've highlighted the network plan called Learning Byte. And by highlighting that, you can see that the country code is set to United States. The purpose of the country code is that we can obey the rules of the regulatory domain underneath which that country falls. The rules of the re regulatory domain determine which channels are available at a certain frequency, so that you cannot use forbidden channels. And the other thing that we arrange by the country code is that you obey the maximum power levels for those different frequencies. If I now select a controller, you actually see that a controller is in a different country code. That could sometimes be useful because you can have multiple controllers on different sites. However, that does not serve all purposes. A controller in the United States controlling access points in the United States is great. And that you can set a controller in the Netherlands and configure it as being in the Netherlands so that it can control access points in the Netherlands is great. I'll have a close look at how we do that in the planning element. And then after that, we'll have a close look at what we can do for access points. In the planning element, you see that I've created two sites, one in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, and another one in Sunnyvale, California, USA. The site in the Netherlands has, and we can see that by clicking on site properties here on the right hand side, a country code of the Netherlands, just as expected. If we select the floor, we see that there is a wiring closet, and in the wiring closet properties, we can see that our controller is listed there. The Sunnyvale site has the properties for the country code United States. Now let's move the controller to the wiring closet in the United States. I selected the wiring closet properties, go for the list, select the controller as one of the available devices, and just move it over to the other wiring closet. I'll click on OK and save this configuration. When we go to configuration and look at the controller, we will see that the country code is now United States. The other thing that we can see, and we can see that here at the bottom in the configuration arrows and warnings overview, and by clicking on that or by directly going to verification here at the top, we can see that we now have an error that states that the access point model WLA532WW is not supported in the United States. That is correct. It is supposed to be used outside the United States, but it is controlled by this controller that we just moved into site inside the United States. Now, that is a very common situation nowadays that you have one controller at the headquarters, for example, in Sonyville in the United States, and you want it to control access points that reside in different countries with different regulatory domains. And if it is outside the United States, it even is access point models that are different. Now, to be able to do that, it is not just enough to just move that access point into the right part of our planning. Let's first have a closer look, look at planning because we do have the ability to move that access point to the right side. In planning, we see that there are objects to place. Now, to be able to place the object, which is an access point here, we first have to like, select the right site. Here in the floor, in the Amsterdam site, we then select objects to place. We select the access point, 
and then click where we want to place it. We see the access point is now moved into the other side. And as we save that piece of configuration, we notice that the one error is gone and we can verify that in the verification section. You see that there is now lo no longer an error that there is an unsupported access point bundle in uh, the country code United States control. As the access point is positioned in the right side. If we go to the devices section, we can actually see that there are changes to deploy. And when we click on review, we see that we changed the country code of the controller from Netherlands to the United States. However, that's not enough because it doesn't say anything about the access point. But let's give it a try. We deploy. And then we get a response from the controller that contains errors. And we then have a closer look at the error mentioned here is that this AP is not allowed in the regulatory domain. So the controller has been moved to the United States. And although we place the access point in the planning in the right side, so the um, error, the warning in the verification section is gone, but it is not enough to make it work. We somehow have to tell the controller that this access point is actually located in another regulatory domain and that it has to obey different rules for that purpose. Let's go back to the configuration. In the configuration, we have a section for radios. In that section for radios, you see that we now can select proper channels and we can even select channel 13. So that is already achieved by placing the access point in the right location. However, that's not enough. To be able to fully support the placement of an AP in a different site than the controller is, we have to create a remote site. I selected in the controller wireless section, the remote sites configuration section. And on the right hand side, I have an option to create a remote site. We're going to create a remote site for Amsterdam, the Netherlands. So let's call the remote site just Amsterdam. NL. We can then select the right country code. As we do not cover wide area network outage options here, I'm not going to support the backup SSID mode. And neither is logging uh, something that we will have a closer look at. The most important thing here is setting the right country code for this access point that is in a different site. So we move the access point into this list. Click Next. So we're not going to have a closer look at logging. Click Finish. And we've created our remote site. The member access point is the WLA02. And when we go to the access points, and we select the access point and have a closer look at the properties, you will see in the remote access point tab, that the remote site has been selected. If we now go to the devices section, you see that there are changes available again. And if we review them, we see that we have created a remote site and the name is referenced. And uh, Sorry, the remote site is created here in green and the name is reference for the access point. And you see that the configuration for the country code of the controller still not has been deployed to the physical device because of the previous error that we got on that. Let's give it a try now. You see the deploy is completed. Everything was successful and we've done, done our job. There is one thing that we can now have a look at. We can go to the configuration. We can go to radios. Besides that, we can choose a different channel. Like, for example, 12 or 13 we could choose. But let's stick to 11. And let's go for some of the higher channels available. These are channels that are available in, in Europe and in the US. But let's pick one here. And, yeah, why well, not take the 13 as well? just to prove that we have fully support of the country code. We save that. We 
can do a deploy straight from here if we would like, but I prefer to go to the devices section because I can always check whether there is network changes available. I click on deploy. You see the deploy is successful. Note that we actually just got one extra warning here. The channel 13 assigned to radio 1 is not in the channel set. The channel set is set to 1, 6 and 11. And we have chosen a channel that is outside of the channel set. That is not a showstopper, but Ringmaster tells you that you've done something that is against your own layout of your wireless solution. So the remote site configuration is something that supports control of an access point that is in a different country code uh, area than the controller actually is. One controller controlling multiple access points and still obeying the rules for the regulatory domain. This is the end of my learning bite. Thank you for joining me and hopefully see you in a future learning bite about the Juniper WLAN solution or any of the other ones. Thank you very much and bye bye. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.